Hey guys, Lucas Green here, back continuing on the rankings for Ben 10 today. Second up is the um, ranking of the Season 1 villains of Ben 10. So let's not waste any time and do this video. This shouldn't take too long, there's only a few. Uh, yeah, I, I did miss one villain on my list, but I have a spot where I'm going to put him. I'm not going to say who it is, but I think I'm only missing one. So let's go this. Starting at the bottom spot for me is no surprise. Uh, this is actually so lo so less of a known villain that you may forget may have forgotten all about him. And that is Jonah Jonah from the episode The Kraken. He is the poacher of that episode, and he's the villain trying to steal the eggs from the Kraken so he can sell them, make money. Now you could say the Kraken is the villain, but she's only doing what she needs to do to protect her eggs. So she's not really a villain, more she's an obstacle. So technically, the real villain is Jonah because he's trying to do something bad. Uh, as it stands out, he's obviously the weakest villain because compared to the other ones, he doesn't have the same scales as height. This is just an average environmental message villain just to uh, squeeze out like uh, that message. So it's it's not the same as like fighting other films like Bill Gax, Ghost Streak, etc. So it's not the same. I mean, I get what we're trying to do here, giving some human villains to face, but at least give us something more creative than a poacher. Anyway, moving on now, the next film on the list is the Limax, which is the alien race that take up take up the old people. Uh, even though I do like the episode, they are these aliens are obviously more effective than Jonah is, as they're able to shape shift and mimic um, mimic elderly people, the people they take, and then they can uh, survive the heat and morph their bodies with stretchy proportions. So it's impressive what they can do, and it's a shame that we never get them to return in some shape or form, which is a shame. Moving on, we have Clancy. Clancy is the bug villain of Ben 10, who again, he has weird motivations because like first he's like, oh I'm upset you destroyed my home, and then it's like revenge because I want to destroy the humans for what they did to me. Um, but yeah, it's very con contradicting of what his character is, so he's a big me he's basically a big mess. It's hard to establish where he stands. So Clancy's just a throwaway villain, I don't really have much to say about him, that's why he's low on my list, but I would put him above like the Limax and Jonah is a more, mem more memorable character as he's in the negative 10. Next up is the drone, which is from the pilot episode. Now I was hesitant to put the drone on this list at all, but Adam, since, his, uh, since Adam wanted to put the drone on his list, I'll put the drone on my list. Uh, this drone essentially is for the pilot, and as a villain, it's basically just an ob it's basically just an obstacle type villain, where its only purpose is to destroy and retrieve the watch at all costs. But it does have iconic moments of sending out its mini drones and of course uh, that final beams clash against Diamond Head at the end. So, but I would say the drone is more memorable than Clancy and the Limax and Jonah. So there we go. Moving on from that we have Crab, uh, who's one of the bounty hunters in the Hunted episode. Who shoots to be pretty effective as he's able to, um, as he's able to uh, nullify Ghost Freak's abilities and give uh, Ben a run for his money. I think this was like the first challenging opponent Ben came up across. So there's that for you, and he's the first one who establishes that the watch has a name, which is the Omnitrix. So he does have some weight to him, I guess. Not much weight, but some. Moving on, we have Six. Six is probably the one of the most, uh, the, be the best bounty hunter of Ben 10, uh, on the bad guy side of things. Um, he, now since the fact he speaks in an alien language, we can make up what Dalek is saying, so... Which makes, in a, in a twisted way, Six Six kind of relatable, and we don't actually see his alien race until the until uh, what's the movie called? Uh, oh, the Secrets of the Omnitrix. Yeah. So, I think he works better with Philgax than against him. So, because Philgax is that kind of a backstabbing douche. But yeah, so is uh, Six Six as well. So they're perfect for each other. And of course, the jetpack design. He's very similar to Boba Fett in a lot of regards. So Six Six is just an iconic. Ben 10 villain that even though he doesn't say a lot in English, he, he says a lot in alien language and that we can play fun with him, make up what he's saying there. Moving on we've got Megawatt who essentially is a bit very powerful little child. It's like all that power in a child's body and his only purpose is just to cause as much destruction and chaos as possible just for the fun of it. So I think the fact that we understand his personality a bit more than 6 6 is I think it's more, you know, well, I'd put him a bit higher than uh, Megawatt, but as it stands, he's just a barrel of laughs to have. Moving on, we have Hex, who is an interesting villain. It's nice to have magic and variety there. Um, his debut episode wasn't the best, which is why he's pretty low on the list. But he's a very well-established character, so he wants to be a common book of spells to help boost his charm power so he can become invincible. 
But then again, he's stopped by Lucky Girl and Ben 10, and uh, yeah, while he doesn't have much to do, it's nice to establish the character for future use, and his magical abilities do seem to do seem to show that he has quite a, a good knack of powers, even though he doesn't fully use those abilities. Moving on, we have Dr. Animo, who is the mad scientist of the series. Um, as it stands, he does have a lot of creativity with his, similar, same with Hex, as he has creativity with his magic. But I think Animo takes more opportunities with his creativity as he mutates different animals. Um, his uh, motivation is kind of petty and childish, but at the same time, it is rather funny too. So he's a rather comical and fun villain to have on screen, which is why he's probably used a lot. Uh, moving on, we have... Uh, where are we at now? Oh, we only have two more to go. Um, Kevin Eleven is at the number two spot. And, of course, there's no surprise there, uh, as he proves to be a very powerful um, powerful villain, able to absorb energy from different devices and and org organisms. As it's not just machines, he can also absorb, like, literally anything, including the objects itself. And he, at the, um, we get, like, heat blast, and we get forearms and all these different, like, mutations fused together with Kevin's own genetics of his body. So we get some nice fun there, and then at the end he gets the. Uh, it's hinted out that he gets the power, the full power of the Omnitrix, and we see that in the frame. So that's nice foreshadowing there, and it's nice to have Kevin Eleven be like the anti Ben. What if Ben went the wrong way kind of deal? So there is a lot of uh, interest, interesting stuff with Kevin there. Moving on, we have the big villain. Of course, it's no surprise to you that Villarax is number one. Obviously, for now anyway, uh, his uh, as he's like the main villain that's been. Uh, you know, being stalk, uh, you know, kind of like stalking down our heroes from day one, sending in drones, then sending in bounties and all this types of stuff to go after Ben to get the Omnitrix. He doesn't know that the Omnitrix is on the child until the uh, until his reveal in the finale in, in in secrets, which is where Ben, which is where Max explains who uh, Vilgax, Vilgax is. Well, no, he doesn't explain who Vilgax is in this episode, but. We established that, you know, um, that Max is a plumber and he's had some dealings with Vilax before. And he's been kind of like, uh, you know, kind of like wary of this. And when this finally happens, like, we finally get this big epic battle, like, capture, Ben's being captured and he's trying to chop the, wa chop, chop the watch off. Max comes in, rams through, gets a point, points a big old blaster, shoots him, which causes, like, this weird malfunction on the watch at some point. And then the battle takes place on Mount Rushmore outside and it crushes, like, pull it down and Ben's taking advantage of the of the glitch in the watch so he switches between aliens which has a bit of a fun dynamic there until it leads off with uh, one big um, explosion in Vilgax's ship so it was a lot of fun ride to have there which is why uh, Vilgax I feel like he gave us a great setup and a great payoff for his character and which we'll see even more of him in the future so yeah no surprise that Vilgax is number one on season one villain uh, hey guys, back again. Just so you know, my uh, camera, my phone died, so I just had to make it all end, wrap up here. Uh, but yeah, that's the uh, list of the Ben 10 villains. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe with that good stuff, hit the notification bell, right corner down below. So you can stay tuned for these uh, all, the, all uh, topics that relate on this channel. Hopefully, you guys have appreciated what I've done, and I'll see you guys for one more Ben 10 ranking as I ra rank one off characters, and that'll be it for today. Because I've got to start work on the Linksy series, um, season seven, episode seven. I'm not sure what title to give it yet, but I'll skip, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. But anyway, join us up for one more video recording session, and I'll see you for that next time. Like always, guys. Peace.